Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the president of Yale University, the commanding officer of Yale Naval Reserve Officers Training Corps, and commander of Yale Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps, welcome to the annual president's review. We specifically acknowledge and thank representatives in attendance from Fairfield University, Quinnipiac University, Sacred Heart University, Southern Connecticut State University, Western Connecticut State University, and the University of New Haven. To you and to all distinguished guests, families, and friends, welcome. Today's music is provided by the United States Navy Band Northeast. Today's review is conducted by the midshipmen and cadets of Yale Naval and Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps. Present day reviews have their basis in both history and tradition. The mass formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle-loaded muskets of yesterday. In those early days, the line of battle was just that, a line of two or three ranks, and looked much like the parade formation you will see today. The adjutant forms the line for battle. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party. Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps, Unit Detachment 009, arriving. Okay. 
Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps Unit, Yale University, arriving. Yale University arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the posting of the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Chaplain Sharon Kudler, Yale University Chaplain, will now give the invocation. Good morning. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Almighty God, source of all truth, here we stand, humbled by the breadth of service both past and present in our midst. We stand proud of what has been made possible because we have committed ourselves to making your world a better place through our willing spirits, able bodies, and courageous hearts. Although today is a celebration, and rightly so, we remember those who have given their lives in service to their country, and we hold close those who are currently deployed and ask that your gentle hand protect them and guide them safely home. Now may our hearts move from gratitude to inspiration as your divine spirit empowers us with a renewed vision and purpose. 
Let us begin this review lifted by splendor, ignited by camaraderie. Together in our many voices, strengths, and faiths, as your loving people, we say, Amen. Please be seated. The President's Review has several purposes. First, it serves to honor and thank the leadership of the universities that host and support our units. This event also serves as an opportunity to publicly recognize the achievements of the midshipmen and cadets you see here today, who have distinguished themselves during the academic year. Ladies and gentlemen, Commanding Officer, Yale University, Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps, Captain Ron Withrow. Good morning, everyone. President Salovey, General Raymond, fellow ROTC commanders, ROTC representatives from our partner colleges and universities, Provost Strobel, Dean Lewis, Yale administrators, faculty and staff, alumni, and supporters who I will collectively refer to as friends of ROTC, award presenters representing a host of organizations, friends and families, welcome all to the Yale ROTC President's Review. This is a great opportunity to showcase our Yale ROTC midshipmen and cadets, recognize our top performers, and also recognize our graduating class of 2023 who will be commissioning in just a few short weeks. This event wouldn't be possible without the hard work from several outstanding individuals. I want to especially thank Marine Option Midshipman Third Class Evan Kwong, the midshipman officer in charge responsible for planning this grand event, uh, U.S. Marine Corps Gunnery Sergeant Chaz King for providing drill instructor grade instruction, our Senior Administrative Coordinator, Liz Vildaki, for coordinating with numerous supporting organizations, and our MC, U.S. Marine Corps Captain Ratsme May, and many, many others. Before I introduce our reviewing officer, President Salovey, for his remarks, I want to talk to you a bit about history, duty, and leadership. For those of you seeing this for the first time today, the President's Review consists of an award ceremony and a military pass and review. So first, um, a bit of history regarding the Passenger Review to expound on what the MC Captain May has already stated. The Passenger Review is a formal time-honored ceremony, dates back to before the Civil War. The purpose of the ceremony was to formally present the military command to a new commander or commanding officer. Probably, visi most, uh, probably visible to most of you would be the Passenger Review before the newly sworn in President of the United States, uh, Commander in Chief, which follows the inaugural ceremony. Another example would be the past review conducted at the recruit graduation ceremonies, marking the completion of boot camp and enlistment into active duty. One in which this guy participated in in 1985, by the way, and yet I retain my youthful appearance, or at least I keep telling my, myself that when I look in the mirror every morning. The military past review has transformed over time to also include honoring the hard work and dedication of military members in the performance of their duties, as we will do today. So what are the duties of cadets and midshipmen? They're not only college students, but distinguish themselves by committing to serve their country as future soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and guardians. They carry the same course load that other students on campus carry, participating in and leading the same diverse palette of extracurricular activities, sports, student government, affinity groups, et cetera, et cetera. But they are different in that they have taken an oath to serve their country in preparation to defend the freedoms and the liberties that all US citizens enjoy. Committing to undergoing intensive instruction to prepare them and in fact transform them mentally, morally, and physically into warriors in the profession of arms. And now looking specifically at our seniors who will be commissioning in just a few short weeks, I know each of you have been giving considerable thought to the oath of office that you will take. As current Navy Service Chief Admiral Mike Gilday stated, the oath is what binds us together. It is the foundation of our profession. It is our North Star, it defines us. Wise words that apply equally to all because cadets and midshipmen, no matter the color of the uniform, the oath is the same and it will define you. And ladies and gentlemen, looking at the world we live in today, we need these creative and energetic young men and women more than ever to lead our armed forces in the coming critical years. Last year, Vice Admiral Roy Kitchener, he's the head of our surface Navy, hosted a junior officer training symposium that was titled Embracing Ingenuity to Sharpen Our Competitive Edge. But this wasn't simply training for these young leaders. They weren't in receive-only mode. Admiral Kitchener used the symposium to foster wide-ranging discussion centered on building efficiencies within the force, improving business practices, and as a venue for junior officers to present current challenges in the surface force that they saw, along with proposed solutions. Why? Because, as the Admiral stated, junior officers play an integral role 
in solving problems on the waterfront. Commandant of the U.S. Marine Corps, General David Berger, shared similar sentiments when he stated, small unit leaders who are well-trained, who have experience and maturity to make decisions, and are empowered to make decisions in lieu of detailed guidance, are powerful, even when outnumbered, and even when up against formations that are two, three, four times as big. This is the bread and butter of the Marine Corps. I acknowledge these are naval-centric examples that I've given, but the Navy and Marine Corps certainly doesn't hold a monopoly on challenging problems and the need to solve them. I'm sure all service branches agree that we must look to these enterprising, energetic, and creative young men and women for solutions. Whether we are talking about the Navy's get real, get better mindset, the Army's people first, winning matters, transformational philosophy, or the Air Force's accelerate, change, or lose strategic approach, at the end of the day, without intelligent, creative, committed, and empowered leaders manning our enlisted and officer ranks, they're just cliched, empty catchphrases. It takes real concern, real leadership, and a willingness to get into the fight, make mistakes, and try, try again. So to the cadets and midshipmen standing here on behalf of all the commanders present, I charge each of you to be the uh, transformational junior leaders and decision makers that our nation needs. Because good leadership does not just propel the military forward, it also propels our nation and our world forward. And we in ROTC enjoy a great partnership with Yale in this regard, working together to develop intelligent, caring, and collaborative leaders to transform our world for the better. Critical to this partnership has been the leadership and the guiding vision of President Peter Salovey. Yale's mission statement reads in part that Yale educates aspiring leaders worldwide who serve all sectors of society. One can easily see the similarity in missions and how this contributes to a supportive, effective partnership. This is no doubt a direct reflection of President Salovey's inspirational leadership and vision. So at this time, I would like to introduce our reviewing official and host, the 23rd President of Yale University and the Chris Argyris Professor of Psychology, Peter Salovey. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you, Captain Withrow. I appreciate the kind introduction. And I'd also like to thank uh, Colonel Granholm for his inspired leadership of Yale's Air Force Reserve Officers Training Corps unit. Both Captain Withrow and Colonel Granholm will be retiring after this semester. And so before I proceed any further, I want to offer my heartfelt appreciation and that of a grateful Yale community for both of your commitments to advancing stability in the world. As we wish you both the very best for the wonderful new chapter on which you are about to embark, we know that you will remain very much a part of the Yale family. With the approach of their retirements, please join me in recognizing Captain Ron Withrow and Colonel George Graham Holmes' exceptional service to this country. Thank you, they have been wonderful leaders here on our campus. To all the parents, loved ones, active duty military members, veterans here, I extend a warm greeting on behalf of my colleagues across the university. And I wish to welcome cadets, liaisons, and leaders here today from our Air Force affiliated universities, Fairfield University, Quinnipiac University, Sacred Heart University, Southern Connecticut State University, the University of New Haven, Wesleyan University, and Western Connecticut State University. The sense of service we mark on this historic occasion dates to the founding of our institution and of the Republic. Here are just a few examples. In 1701, Yale became the first American university to inscribe service to society explicitly in its founding legislation. Scores of Yaleys have served with distinction in every major conflict since the Revolutionary War. Yale Air Force ROTC was one of the original 77 senior Air ROTC units established by an order General Eisenhower signed. 
And Yale was also among the initial group of universities to establish an ROTC program more than a century ago. Army ROTC in 1917, followed by Naval ROTC in 1926, and Air Force ROTC in 1946. At the time, Major General Robert M. Danford predicted the program would become one of the many priceless heritages of future generations at Yale. When I look out at all of you, I can see that he was right. The 55 Air Force cadets and the 31 midshipmen currently participating in Yale's ROTC program are carrying forward the proud legacy of those before them. This includes the valor of nearly 30,000 Yalies who served in the First and Second World Wars, Korea, and Vietnam. And the spirit of sacrifice that links these military men and women is a hallmark of the spirit of Yale itself. It is a desire to serve, to look beyond self-interest. It is the desire to contribute to the common good. And it is, in short, the desire to improve the world today and for future generations. Indeed, that is how our mission statement begins. And this is the call the class of 2023 has answered. Your decision to serve our country in the armed forces is vital at this moment. We can see the increasing pressure of the spirit of division around the globe. Yet today, we salute your accomplishments and we can also see a thriving spirit of service. It's a spirit forged over centuries. Indeed, the fabric of our nation is woven by individuals who have defended it for nearly 250 years. Their resilience and wisdom help build a nation and their strength help bind it together during difficult times. Their courage help save a world torn apart by war twice. Their determination has protected millions from a life of oppression and hardship. Their compassion has brought food, clothing, shelter, and medicine to those who needed it most. And their unselfish motives in the face of adversity brought hope to those who were suffering. Throughout your time, I've observed the same sense of optimism, courage, and selflessness in you. And I know the class of 2023 will manage to make us even more proud in the years ahead. Now, I'd like to congratulate all our soon-to-be graduates and express my appreciation to all our midshipmen and cadets for their dedication to service and their many contributions to Yale and their universities and colleges. You will soon be second lieutenants and ensigns, serving as America's ambassadors around the world. You will face challenges and opportunities in a rapidly changing global climate with incredible technological advances that both connect people across nations and cultural borders, but also pose unpredictable security risks. You will also experience shifts in political and environmental landscapes. Yet regardless of what trials you may face, I am, I am confident that you, like the generations of Yalies who contributed to this country before you, will lead and serve the greater good. We're so proud of what you have accomplished here, and we eagerly look forward to all you will achieve in the future as you build on Yale's tradition of loyal service to community and to country. Thank you very much for joining us today. And to all of you, thank you, and please accept my most heartfelt congratulations.
Thank you very much. We will now begin with the presentation of awards. The Veterans of Foreign Wars Award is presented by Mr. Mario Richards, Veterans of Foreign Wars Connecticut State Commander. This award recognizes one midshipman and one cadet who demonstrate a positive attitude towards ROTC, outstanding professional attributes, and officer potential. This year's Naval ROTC recipient is midshipman Andrew Turkleton, and Air Force ROTC recipient is Cadet McKenna Picton. The General Society of the War of 1812 Award is presented by Mr. Lee Tryon, Secretary of the General Society of the War of 1812 in the state of Connecticut. This award recognizes one midshipman and one cadet who represent the cherishing, maintenance, and extension of the institutions of American freedom and foster true patriotism and love of country. This year's Naval ROTC recipient is Midshipman Samuel Yankee, and Air Force ROTC recipient is Cadet Caitlin Atlasnig. The Yale Veterans Association, true to her traditions award, is presented by Mr. Joshua Ray, Yale College Class of 2013, and Holly Hermes, Yale University Incoming Liaison for Veteran and Military Affairs, and Colonel, United States Air Force Reserve. The mission of Yale University is to educate leaders. Additionally, Yale has a long and glorious tradition of service in defense of our nation. The Yale Veterans Association is very pleased to present its True to Her Traditions Leadership Award to honor and commemorate these ideals to the midshipmen and cadet who have demonstrated a strong commitment to them over the past year. This year's Naval ROTC recipient is Midshipman Victoria Smithson and Air Force ROTC recipient is Cadet Nita Q. The Yale Veterans Network Annual ROTC Award is presented by Ms. Tamika Hollis, 
co-chair of the Yale Veterans Network. In the spirit of the Yale Veterans Network's charge to connect veterans on campus, this award recognizes one midshipman and one cadet who have demonstrated commitment to the Yale ROTC program through outstanding leadership, discipline, character, citizenship, and academic achievement. This year's Naval ROTC recipient is Midshipman Juliana Calvert, and Air Force ROTC recipient is Cadet Grace Zerba. The Order of the Purple Heart National Leadership Award is presented by Major Daniel Edinger, United States Army Retired and Order of the Purple Heart Regional Commander, and Mr. Mike Perrone, Order of the Purple Heart State Commander. This award recognizes the demonstrated leadership ability of one midshipman and one cadet enrolled in a university ROTC program. This year's Naval ROTC recipient is Midshipman Tori Imhoff, and Air Force ROTC recipient is Cadet Thomas Nardini. The Rear Admiral Frederick B. Warder Award for Outstanding Achievement is presented by Captain Tom Olson, United States Navy retired and Vice President of the Naval Submarine Lee Nautilus Chapter. The Rear Admiral Frederick B. Warder Award for Outstanding Achievement, established in 1986, recognizes a graduating Naval ROTC senior approved for entry into the Navy's nuclear propulsion program as submarine officers. The awardee has demonstrated superior, sustained performance in a difficult and challenging academic and operational environment, and as a result, has earned the commanding officer's nomination for this distinctive award. This year's recipient is Midshipman Dan Nguyen. The Corporal Langdon Laws Ricketts Award is presented by Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Gorgumis, United States Marine Corps and Marine Fellow at the Jackson School of Global Affairs. Corporal Ricketts graduated from Yale College in 1916 and was killed in action during World War I at Mont Blanc in 1918. A decorated Marine who was the recipient of the Croix de Guerre, all accounts maintain that Corporal Ricketts had a knack for maintaining his wits in the face of chaos. Importantly, he was an enlisted man, a non-commissioned officer. NCOs are the backbone of the Marine Corps. More than any other service, the Marines place special trust and confidence in the abilities of their junior most enlisted leadership. It is this sort of Marine that the recipient of the Corporal Langdon Laws Ricketts Award will be called upon to lead shortly after their graduation from Yale College. This year's recipient is Midshipman Catherine Yang. The Hiram Bingham Third Award is presented by Jack Beecher, outgoing military and veteran liaison. This award, in honor of the esteemed Yale academic, explorer, and politician, Hiram Bingham III is presented to urge its awardee to always fight for truth, justice, and mercy, and to serve as a reminder to all to fear nothing except to do wrong. This award recognizes a senior Yale Air Force ROTC cadet who exhibits the highest level of integrity and in American citizenship. This year's recipient is Cadet James Crossdale. The Robert N. Tharp Award is presented by Colonel Granholm. 
Robert N. Tharp was an esteemed teacher and mentor to generations of Air Force language specialists. This award recognizes a Yale Air Force ROTC cadet for excellence in academic achievement and for inspiring others toward global cultural awareness. This year's recipient is Cadet Isabella Skembri. The Yale Veterans Association Class of 1966 sword is presented by Mr. Tom O'Playden, Yale College Class of 1966 and President Emeritus of the Yale Veterans Association. This sword is awarded to a Naval ROTC student who possesses a demonstrated leadership ability and who has earned the respect of Yale classmates inside and outside of the Naval ROTC program. Through their efforts, they have materially contributed to bridging the civilian military divide and by exerting leadership in both spheres, have enhanced the prestige of the Naval ROTC program on campus and reinforced the Yale tradition of engaging in service to society as a desirable life objective. This year's recipient is Midshipman Kevin Walsh. The Admiral David S. Ingalls Leadership Award is presented by Mr. Redmond S. Ingalls, Yale College Class of 1998 and grandson of Admiral David S. Ingalls. David S. Ingalls, Yale College Class of 1920, was the Navy's first ace with five confirmed kills in World War I. He later served as Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Aeronautics, where he tripled the number of Navy aircraft while advocating for a fully deployable carrier task force. At Yale, he twice captained the men's hockey team. The Admiral David S. Ingalls Award recognizes a senior Yale Naval ROTC midshipman who shows uncommon ability and leadership potential. This year's recipient is Midshipman Benjamin Markert. The Yale Veterans ROTC Fund Award is presented by Mr. Peter Salovey, President of Yale University. This award recognizes a senior in the Army, Naval, and Air Force ROTC units who is in good standing in their unit with excellent academic and military performance records. This year's Army recipient is Cadet Alexandra Rakov. Marine Corps recipient is Midshipman Aaron Koo. Navy recipient is Midshipman Joseph Murphy. Air Force recipient is Cadet Brian Regan. This year marks the first presentation of the Yale Veterans ROTC Fund Award to a cadet selected for service in the United States Space Force. To commemorate this event, accompanying President Salovey, who will present the sword, is General John W. Raymond, the former Chief of Space Operations of the United States Space Force. The Space Force recipient is Cadet Charlotte Vick. This concludes the individual award presentations. To our midshipmen and cadets who are undertaking extra academic coursework, undergoing physical training, participating in numerous community events, and willingly have pledged to serve their country upon graduation, please join me in giving them a round of applause.
ladies and gentlemen, we will now recognize the class of 2023. Please hold your applause until everyone has been recognized. Cadet April Kim from Fredericksburg, Virginia of Polly Murray College, service assignment, Transportation Corps Officer. First assignment, Basic Officer Leader Course, Fort Lee, Virginia. Cadet Alexandra Rakov from New Haven, Connecticut of Branford College, service assignment, Medical Service Corps Officer. First assignment, Basic Officer Leader Course, Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Midshipman Dan Wynn from Falls Church, Virginia of Trumbull College. Service assignment, Submarine Warfare Officer. First assignment, Naval Nuclear Power School, Joint Base Charleston, South Carolina. Midshipman Aaron Koo from Diamond Bar, California of Benjamin Franklin College. Service assignment, Marine Corps Officer. First assignment, The Basic School, Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia. Midshipman Benjamin Marker from Portsmouth, Rhode Island of Jonathan Edwards College. Service assignment, Naval Aviator. First assignment, Naval Flight School, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Midshipman Joseph Murphy from Milwaukee, Wisconsin of Ezra Stiles College. Service assignment, Naval Intelligence Officer. First assignment, Basic Intelligence Officer Training, Naval Air Station, Dam Neck Annex, Virginia. Midshipman Emily Quisenberry from Glen Eagle, Maryland of Grace Hopper College. Service Assignment, Naval Reactors Engineer. First Assignment, Naval Reactors Preliminary Training, Naval Reactors Headquarters, District of Columbia. Midshipman Kevin Walsh from San Diego, California of Pearson College. Service assignment, Naval Aviator. First assignment, Naval Flight School, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Midshipman Catherine Yang from Coast Cobb, Connecticut of Brantford College. Service assignment, Marine Corps Officer Candidate. First assignment, Marine Corps Officer Candidate School, Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia. Midshipman Thomas Zamora from San Diego, California of Morse College. Service assignment, Marine Corps Officer Candidate. First assignment, Marine Corps Officer Candidate School, Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia. Cadet James Crossdale from Burlington, Massachusetts of the University of New Haven. Service assignment, Air Force Pilot. First assignment, Undergraduate Pilot Training, Laughlin Air Force Base, Texas. Cadet Danielle Daly from Alexandria, Virginia of Benjamin Franklin College. Service assignment, remotely piloted aircraft pilot. First assignment, remotely piloted aircraft course, Randolph Air Force Base, Texas. Cadet Presley Hill from Franklin, Connecticut of the University of New Haven. Service assignment, Air Force Intelligence Officer. First assignment, Intelligence Officer, Technical School, Goodfellow Air Force Base, Texas. Cadet Quinton Holand from the District of Columbia of Berkeley College. Service assignment, Cyberspace Operations Officer. First assignment, Undergraduate Cyber Training, Keesler Air Force Base, Mississippi. Cadet William Klein from St. Petersburg, Florida of Brantford College. Service assignment, Space Operations Officer. First assignment, Master's Program in Aeronautics and Astronautics, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Cadet Brian Regan from Redondo Beach, California of Morse College. Service assignment, Air Force Helicopter Pilot. First assignment, Master's Program in Aerospace Engineering, Georgia Institute of Technology, Atlanta, Georgia. Cadet Cole Snedeker from Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey of Pearson College. Service assignment, Air Force Intelligence Officer. First assignment, Intelligence Officer Technical School, Goodfellow Air Force Base, Texas. Cadet Charlotte Vick from Inglewood, Florida of the University of New Haven. Service assignment, 
Space Force Intelligence Officer, first assignment, 345th Recruiting Squadron, Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. Cadet Matthew Vitarelli from Bethel, Connecticut of Polly Murray College, service assignment, Cyberspace Operations Officer, first assignment, Undergraduate Cyber Training, Keesler Air Force Base, Mississippi. Cadet Kate Yeager from Salinas, California of Silliman College, service assignment, Information Operations Officer, first assignment, 352nd Special Operations Wing, Royal Air Force, Mildenhall, United Kingdom. Cadet Grace Zerba from Dayton, Ohio of Saybrook College, service assignment, Acquisitions Officer, first assignment, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for our graduating seniors. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the pass and review, service songs, and departure of the official party. My sisters and brothers, let us go forth from this place in peace, with wisdom and understanding, with compassion and mercy, with courage and commitment. May we be blessed this day and every day by the shimmering light of our God who creates, sustains, and embraces all life. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We invite all presenters and award recipients to join us at the center court to take photos. Thank you for attending and please join us for luncheon in the lobby upstairs.